Enjoy the show. Play on the tangent. Jerks Productions. South Philly-based company. We are a Delco-based production company, and uh, we saw you at a little shindig that uh, we were at called the Great Media Comic Con last year, and a little birdie told me that you're going to be there again this year. Yeah, all weekend long. All weekend long, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna party in media and show them how Philly does it. So what got wow. you, what got you into Break the question. con market is my first Bad. question. You know, I mean, it's the production side <laughs> makes sense, but you guys are more than a production company. Uh, yeah. So we started doing. Like, we did very few cons as jerks. We did, like, a Philly Punk Rock Flea Market and stuff like that, and we were using it as an outlet to promote, like, our films and our art shows, as well as kind of, like, recruit new art, join our, like, community and stuff like that. And then when uh, we built, kind of built our community up, we uh, started doing cons in terms of, like, uh, Jill's baking side, mm-hmm. And just kind of still networked and just got to... It was just a good way to meet people and be like, ah, you're a creative, I'm a creative. Like, we're now best friends and doing karate in the garage kind of thing. Yeah, but you're also hooking them with food. You're like, oh, well, that, yeah, that's hey, your there's end. this amazing food. Yeah. Hey, I also have this uh, production stuff. And you're like, all right, well, I'm stuffing my face. Now I need something to watch. Yeah. Like, okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's a honey pot. You're hooking them in. Here. I remember like, my kid like playing with the prop head while I was selling a cookie. Oh yeah, we multitasked it. Yeah, it was good. I love it. Yeah, You're doing it all. So you sure are. Plus, I have no shame, so like I will whore myself out wherever I need to. Yeah, there's no line then. There's absolutely no line if you do none. No. There's nothing to cross. There's just keep walking. You know. It's an interesting <laughs> thing to have because. I'm on your YouTube. I'm looking at it here. Kill of the Week podcast. You have your own podcast. Yeah, that that's a that's a new one that we just started up. Um, I recently purged our YouTube channel, so um, I put a bunch of we have we had a it was very unorganized. It was a lot of like various short films and trailers and different things, and it was like we're going into 2024. Let's kind of start fresh. Um, I want to get this this podcast off the ground where we sit down with a friend and we talk about different movie kills and then derail into whatever else kind of pops up. But um, one of the things that I wanted to do with it is kind of get on a routine and a schedule that I lost. So like I'm going to have like resurgences of our old shorts kind of popping back up. So like right now it's just like the podcast and aphasia promos and like that's what I've been curating it to be to kind of get more traction going. Well, it's good mm-hmm. because I'm glad you mentioned aphasia because aphasia is your your movie project. And yeah, first feature length. That speaks right to me, man. I mean, we've had multiple indie film creators on and especially when you look at film creation and food they go hand in hand i mean you know it's almost like you should have like a confectionery treat for the person when they buy a ticket like here's your treat and there's your ticket yeah. now go in and have fun I mean, that's what we're doing for our film premiere i'm gonna have treats on every seat yeah. as, a, as a welcome treat great minds you know what i mean oh man yeah, yeah. that's very Nice. Yeah, so I'll have treats on every seat, and then, you know, obviously at Media Comic Con, we'll have plenty of treats available and have the great Media Comic Con cookie for sale and all that, and yeah. Cookies and treats are the way yeah. to a nerd's heart, yeah. I just have to tell you. Like, yeah. Sugar <laughs> is the one, it, sugar is the first drug that everyone in America just yeah. automatically accepted as, you know, like, your own personal demon. Like, you know what, you're going to be here forever. Mm-hmm. Comfy. And I love it. I love sugar. It's funny, though, because, like, I rarely eat what she makes. So, like, she'll be baking stuff and be like, here, try this. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it. But, like, I'm not, like, gorging myself. And people have a hard time understanding understanding that because I'm not a sugar fiend. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. I get that, too. I'm not, I'm not a sugar guy. 
But when I do indulge in sugar, it's just like I need to be in like a corner by myself. Like, oh my god, this is so good. And then I repent. It up. Yeah, I repent afterwards. You know, I repent afterwards. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's that deathbed repentance that gets you. It gets you through. Um, but oh, yeah. confectionery treats aside, I mean, kill of the week. I do like the idea of that podcast. Um, you know, just taking your favorite kill, and I mean, you could even go to. I mean, damn. I mean, Frank, do you have a favorite kill in any kind of recent media? I'm trying to buffer so I can think of my answer. Wow. Not Kennedy. Uh, Jesus Christ. I wasn't going there. I wasn't going to Kennedy. We all know that was the CIA. I was thinking fictional. 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 Oh, I misunderstood. Jesus Christ. Big brother in the background. Um. He misunderstood yeah. the assignment. Yeah. Um, but fictional. <laughs> what fictional. he really understood. Hmm. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, no. damn, fictional a, a kill. If I had to think of it, um, Aunt May like, from he, the oh, Aunt May. recent Spider Man. That's my kill because you didn't see Uncle Ben. Oh, Peter with it was Aunt May. With the fucking goblin bomb and Willem Dafoe in the corner. That was like a clue type of a death that I, I mean, I don't think anybody really saw coming. And everyone hoped that Peter would have blew up instead of Aunt May. Because Marissa Tomei mm-hmm. is a national treasure. <laughs> Somehow hey, that can... just doesn't work. That just doesn't work, Marissa Tomei. Come on. Frank. Um I don't remember what? the actress who was the older Aunt May, which is somewhat, somewhat, I mean, like somebody read the book. Marissa Tomei is a hot aunt at most. Yeah. <laughs> She's the Aunt now, May I want, want, Frank. No, 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 no. Not that older, you know, that, that gets us, that's her practically great, great aunt. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Please. <laughs> She's the youngest. She's the youngest aunt of all. Okay, please. I mean, that's like you're getting you're drinking Arbor Mist with Marissa Tomei. Like that's what you're doing. You're 14, getting Arbor Mist with her. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, I'm right. You had that in. I did. I still love Arbor Mist Aunt May. I mean, that's just me. I I, I think. <laughs> I think she was the perfect Aunt May. She was very inspirational. Um, you know, Peter was loved. It's going to make the next movie yeah. really suck because, you know, nobody knows who the fuck you are and you're not loved at all. So at least you have that memory. <laughs> Aunt May said, you know, next few years are going to suck, but it came out with great power comes great responsibility. Sure. Yeah. Mixed messages aside. Um, that was my yeah. that's my fa- that's my favorite kill in recent uh, in in at least the recent time that I can think of immediately. Frank, now I buffered enough. What is what is your uh, favorite kill? Parker from Alien. Nice, nice. That's a good one. I love Yafet Koda. I mean, he was like, if there's a character to play, mm-hmm. man, that guy that guy nailed it. And yeah. when you know he died, I go, when well, he was just killed. Oh man, it was just like. I can't do anything. I'm too scared. Move, move, goddammit. it! <laughs> Sat there and he died. I, that was just sad. That was yeah. just, but man, it was, just, it was emotional. So, that was me, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've, ranged, we've ranged on this podcast so far from like everything from a. Uh, we did. We recently did a Tremors episode, mm. and we did um, Batman. Uh, well, former guest on your podcast and friend of ours, uh, Jim Canatelli, was mm. on Kill of the Week, and um, love Jim. I uh, he, oh, he's such yeah, a Jim's great a, guy, Jim's an awesome dude. And I pitched the idea to him, and he's like, "Oh my god!" Like Batman '89, the Joy Buzzer kill. So we talked Batman for an hour, and it was it was awesome. I posted on my social media uh, a, a little bit, a little bit ago, but. Like Batman was rated PG thirteen, but you saw Jack Nicholson having a full conversation with a smoldering corpse that had a smile on his face. He was responding to things the corpse was saying. He was. There was like a complete <laughs> schizophrenia moment there, to where like the Joker was having a conversation with this corpse, 
And that was PG-13 back in the day. Like, ah, just be 13. Oh, have a parent yeah, next crazy. to you. Uh. That's fair. Because it was still done fun. Yes. That's the thing. It was still mm-hmm. fun. Well, it was Jack Nicholson. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't uber violent. It was just, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. Uh, no, like, there was no no blood, no swearing. It what? was and the kooky colors when he got zapped. It was just, it was yeah. it was comical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. They took the comical Basically. aspect to that, which was also why it's also one of my favorites because it's just one of those hand zappers, and it's just like, guess what? He's melted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think well, that's been the fun part of Kill of the Week is that it goes from like super bloody, like we. What was the first uh, the very first episode was like a uh, Friday thirteenth part four. Okay. Uh, it was like a shower, like you know, massacre scene, and then we've done that, and then we've done tremors, we've done so many different and then what we just do the society. The oh, we did the shunting from society uh, for the newest episode coming so we out. We did that and then like we eventually want to do uh Watchmen. I'm like, I wanna do the death of Doctor Manhattan's human form mm. and just go like weird philosophical. Like so we've like had a range of like oh yeah. not everything has to be like bloody obnoxious. It's just been really funny to right. see what people yeah. pick. I think, you know, they even died in the notebook. Like, it could be anything. Like, yeah. fine. The notebook. The kills that I thought, that man, was, I thought that was I really, was... uh, really did, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that was really just visually just yeah. wow. Gut, yeah. gut wrench. Like, we could do like the old couple and the type of that was like holding hands, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that was, was that was an <laughs> epic kill. I mean, yeah. not, not Rose and Jack. Like, there was yeah. completely yeah, enough room. Have, yeah. On that, we on that should board. do that. We should do Jack as a kill the week that she killed him, that she could have yeah. totally shared the door. No, we get, that should be an entire if, if we're gonna do a Titanic kill, it has to be the band. But would the it band matter? Was epic. Would it matter though? Like yeah. from being in the water where he was to being slightly less above water and having the wind the hit door. you and be cold. Like it's more like Prince. I don't know. I think well, I kind of feel Jack was gonna either die way. either way. Yeah. Hyperthermia would have kicked bit. in. He was probably warmer underwater if he, he had no fat. He was a skinny I little mean, boy. They, 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 they were fat. Like, yeah. They were all too skinny on the Titanic. Rose had some yeah. meat, okay? She had some meat. She had the thermal aptitude for the situation. So I think Rose just understood this weak little chicken is going to die either way. Doesn't matter yeah. if I move over a smidge on this board. She's He's gonna just going to try to... You could have tried a little hard. You could have tried a little. This is the love of her life. She could have tried a little, is what I'm saying. Maybe I'm just yeah. a cold-hearted son of a bitch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, could... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We maybe, maybe we are. That like, no, she could have shared. All I'm saying is, if he would have peed in the water, he probably would have been warm enough to be okay. That's all what, another five yeah, so like three seconds, three, four seconds, and after that, it's just back to like freezing cold. A little bit of I want, that, that, I want that glimmer of hope before it is ripped away from you. That's what I want. A little bit of whiskey, a yeah. little bit of alcohol. I feel Jack could have made it, you know, because yeah. there's that exactly. thing of in extreme cold, you have like, you know, it, it help. It does hinder you at a certain point. You can't be shit faced, but. Yeah, you know, there's a certain level. Well, that was, that's how you know it was fake. At least the movie, uh, you know, movie adaptation, because no one just went and like raided the liquor cabinet. They all just stayed sober and decided to drown. Like, yeah. I like, if I'm gonna go on with the ship, I might as well have a good time while, while I'm doing it. Yeah. I feel like the old couple that were like huddling uh, together, they should have been the ones yeah. hitting the scotch. Like, look, we're gonna yeah, be together. Please. We got one last shot. In you this, could still you know? hug and like have another shot before you know? like, like Jack should have done that because he was he was the poor guy. Like, you know, he's like, I'll never drink this fine of whiskey ever again because mm. I'm gonna die. Well, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had to have top shelf liquor there too. Injected into my veins, man. Like that's what I want. You know, I mean, a little <laughs> bit of sex in a car, a couple shots of Jaeger, yeah. some Jaeger bombs. Exactly. The boat's going you're down. Not, you're you're nice and warm. Yeah. Hey, Rose, everything's gonna be fine. I don't even feel the cold. Yeah. I mean, it's really like yeah, a, yeah, it's like know, a cold you know, punch. He, he was warm thinking of those drawings. That's it. He kept them warm <laughs> thoughts of that. Oh, like if you tuck shirt. them in your shirt, if you tuck them in your shirt, it's a bit of an installation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it could he could have taken his pants off and tied the ends, like I learned in Boy Scouts, and then used his pants as a flotation pants device. Off in Boy Scouts. 
it, that was with the scoutmaster, but there was an actual swimming lesson. <laughs> there was an actual uh, swimming lesson to where you could use your pants <laughs> as a flotation device to where you tie off oh, the, the oh, pants. Yeah, that's what they told you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's how they get your pants off, guys. How else is the molestation going to happen if you don't get the pants off? You know, it's step one. Teach them them a life skill. Yeah, body temperature and no one's wearing a belt buckle, so don't be surprised. Hey, no, you use the belt to tie off the other end of Uh, where the waist goes, so that way you had your flotation device. See, it wasn't for choking. It wasn't for choking at all. Yeah. That, that that's that was a separate lesson. That was a separate was lesson. A I mean, I thought it was so you couldn't escape. <laughs> that was the not tying lesson. You're getting all the lessons <laughs> confused. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Bow tie knot for yeah, a reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I love improv, and I love you guys love improv, too, because I can pick that up when I talk to people, because you can go off oh, yeah. on a ridiculous premise, and especially with podcasting, and when everybody, oh, yeah. like, leans in and be like, yeah, but what if you th- have to tie your shoes? And then you have to think of a whole other thought premise of, <laughs> well, how would I tie my shoes with a rapey clown following me? I don't know. Against a wall, where your ass is covered. Yeah. See why it, basically you, you would use it you would use it as an extra belt that's a, that's a quick mind see that's a quick mind right there see yeah, that was that was razor sharp light. razor sharp oh my god yeah. the wall. i mean that was not, a, not even a hesitation just let me think about it, that no, against the wall so. this is why we're married you know like this, this is what sealed you know clown rape was the uh, first topic of conversation Dave was watching oh, it. it was, I can yeah. imagine the first date now. Like, so how do you feel about clown rape? You, you know, I kind of stand against it. Um, it's my Bulger's overall good first premise. I'm on the wall about it, you know? Yeah. Is there a horn or do you get a balloon animal? Where are we at here? Why does yeah, he no. want to rape that person? What did they do to him? Yeah. Why does that clown want to react that way? Because he was the last one in the car. <laughs> it was very stuffed. It was so crazy. Well, he, he had to pay the gas. He had to pay for the gas. <laughs> he, had, he had to finish the pie. That's all. He had to pay for the gas. Oh, yeah. man. The gas is so expensive in that little clown car for some <laughs> it reason. Is. It's probably the weight of everybody in there. You got like 60 people in See, there. the problem is, the biggest problem with the car is that the stick shift. And that's where it becomes the issue. You just have to have one person who's really good at kegels. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And boom, <laughs> perfect shift every time. You don't even need yeah. to push in the clutch. No, nope. fourth gear all day. <laughs> I'm gonna make flashcards, uh, you know, just not even say anything. Just go. <laughs> hey, you know. Would you believe that I'm a horror writer and not a comedy writer? Oh, man. You know, um, well, the, two them, the two of them actually run pretty close neck to neck to each other as far as writing. You know, it's the timing. Yeah, it's time everything. Is you, know, you can tell, um, though. You know, I mean, it, what you it's it's you can tell that you're on the same frequency, you know, and yeah. you play off each other. Well, it's that dynamic <laughs> that it it. I can I can see it because I've had that kind of dynamic with different kind of people that have podcasted with throughout the years, especially with like Frank, and Chris, uh, Chris Bristow, my business partner. Um, when you get into a rhythm with someone, and it's it's a special kind of bond you have with that person, you know, like especially like the improv thing that we we, we were just doing. I've made so many friends just because. They could improv with me like that, like oh, yeah. it's it's you, almost you like a, a secret it's handshake. Great. Yeah, mm. well, especially because then it becomes a game of like, all right, I gotta out fuck up this guy like real mm. quick and see what I can do. Yeah, almost like a. a I'm gonna personal... throw you a bone, but I'm gonna take five in. So it's almost yeah. like a personal game of the aristocrats. Like, all right, how yeah, dark it's... can you get? Because I can get dark, and. <laughs> 
you play off each other like that. It's that improvisation that really it's a special kind of connection that you make with a certain human being. And knowing that yeah. you two have that connection is is just it make your business make sense now. Yeah, it completely <laughs> it completely makes sense. You know, uh, I mean, you, you you saw us at media last time. We had a head, and I was like with a tongue, and we were we were having fun. I and mean, we've also been best friends since we were what, like fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. We've so. known each other forever since <laughs> we lads. So wow, you remind nice. me of uh, my friend uh, Brandon and Kelly Miller because uh, Kelly uh, used to live down the street from me. Brandon was my buddy. We started tried to start a punk band. Uh, back in high school and middle school and mm. he used to come over to my house and he'd be like hey man why don't we go down to Kelly's why don't we go down to Kelly and now they're married so I like to tell mm-hmm. them like I I made your relationship like he came over to my house just <laughs> to hang out with you so like I was the conduit like you're welcome you know yeah there you go it's that kind of a Take bond. all that credit but it's that kind of a bond I see with you too just like I see with them you know <laughs> that nerdy creative couple Who's doing good? Yeah. You know, you play off each other well, but you also build each other up. Yeah, that's how we've lasted this long. I think that I think that's like that's, that's like it. the key. Because I mean, like Frank has been in our shows. Frank has seen like us at our best and our worst. I think in terms of least show pressure, and like that we were able to like overcome a lot of because even in like bad situations we're like no we're gonna figure out a way to make it we're gonna make it right it's gonna be it's gonna be okay well, it's even just when a hiccup. no one else shows up we entertained ourselves and yeah frank and i entertained ourselves during the stephen king show and just kind of yeah like, exactly <laughs> i believe we, that we i believe everything oh, that, was, yeah. that yeah. was fun yeah yeah but yeah i mean uh, the the other the shows that you guys had like years ago, when I first started coming out there, I was like, wow, these guys are really connected to each other. I haven't yet to see anyone like throw like daggers at each other. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's while I'm not watching is another thing. <laughs> into the bathroom and like iron things out, you know, whatever. But overall, it's been very, you guys are like, okay, no problem. Okay, we'll get Brandon, you break. You'll get it. Don't worry. It speaks you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it speaks to the... really well. so it's a nice little, you know, you know, connecting upstairs. You know, I go, please. Well, uh, yeah, but it speaks to the level of communication that you have to each other, sure. especially being friends since you were 14. You have the miles on the odometer together to where you know each other's little idiosyncrasies and quirks, and you know how to make that person better and highlight them. You know, and there's not enough of like a long term (laughs) friendship relationship stuff out there in the the days to uh, days today, because statistics tell me that Um, being able to weather the storm and the first storm that a lot of people got into, especially recently, was COVID. How did Mm -hmm. you guys handle covid how did did anything change did you become closer together was it how how was that as a struggle uh well i think with us we we didn't get out of work with the day jobs so i think what happened was at least we we were essential workers and um the chaos didn't stop for us so we were in the grind of humanity while at the same time trying to be like, oh, like we've we've canceled all of our shows that we had planned. Um, everyone who was in the shows completely obviously understood. There was no one saying like, you know, well, fuck you guys. Like we didn't have that, luckily. But we're like, okay, Are yeah, you we're scared gonna, of death. Is- yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh we we took it as a, it was our first break. At that point, in what eight years? Yeah, it was our first time to like slow down and breathe for a second. So yeah, and, I imagine. And then it was weird. It we lasted three other. weeks. Yeah, we well we stopped for a minute. We're like, okay, we should probably try to survive. And then five seconds later, we missed everything we were doing. So we decided to start doing weekly uh, virtual hangouts with the artists we work with, and yeah. just to keep each other sane and just to communicate. We ended up uh, deciding to start aphasia during COVID. It was pretty much like a do or die moment. So yeah. When the world was on fire, we decided to just throw everything at the wall and we're like, fuck it, we might as well just try it now. And 
It was the hardest and most exhilarating time, and I'm still fucking tired from like, it. Like, if if COVID <laughs> if COVID were to have killed me, like if I would have like gotten it then and it killed me, I would have been on my deathbed at least happy knowing that I went down like trying to we do something. We went down with that shit. We were fighting. Yeah, it was like it was it was it hit that moment where like when when we pitched the idea to these people in 2020, like when COVID was like at its peak. And we're like, hey, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to do it. And we feel and we like took every precaution. Took every precaution possible. We were we were testing. Everyone was masked up, gloved up. Some of us. And it got to the point to where when we pitched our our little you know singing for our supper, it was like, look guys, we have this passion. We have the story we want to tell, and we want you guys to be a part of it. If you want to be a part of it, amazing. If not, we totally understand. And uh, people people got on board with us because they felt that same drive and i think if we didn't have if we didn't have jerks as a whole and the community behind it i think we We didn't already have the years built that too i think i think we probably would have we probably would have drowned if it wasn't for everyone that was in our corner that was like you want to make a movie during the biggest you know death scare and and pandemic thing possible fuck it let's go in and we're going to go in strong and we're going to do it and if I would have died in that moment, I would have been happy knowing, like, I tried and I got yeah. something right. off the ground. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of our community was was really struggling and drowning in their own lives. So we had to kind of keep it together to keep what they needed and be what yeah. they needed. And then once they kind of balanced themselves out, then we kind of fell apart for a minute. We're like, okay, we need a minute. We're drowning, too. Yeah. But we, <laughs> we kind of just took care of each other and just fought our way through it and yeah. still doing it. So well, And then obviously I just had COVID oh. That's a beautiful, oh, yeah. It's a beautiful statement. It's a beautiful yeah. story because yeah. being able to rely on that other person, a lot of people found that that person is not exactly the perfect person for them in this COVID thing. But from what I, I, I like that from what I'm picking up from you is from your history. You know, it's you've you're putting in the work to, you know, build each other up. But also you have a special connection that you, you know, it's undeniable. And I think it speaks out to your work, especially being able to roll with the punches, being able to roll out. And, you know, one of the things that I did uh, when COVID hit, because I was a central worker as well. I'm in the automotive industry. Um, I went out and we got on this. We got on to the Discord and the Skype and all that. And being able to podcast through that time definitely helped me keep my sanity in that moment. It was something that was you were still able to hang out with friends without having to, you know, be in the same physical location as each other. And yeah, being able to go build off of that is what you've done well. Now, aphasia, it came out of 2020, your lockdown, build it up for our wall jangers on why they need to hunt you and this film. Right. Oh, I'm bad at the elevator pitch. Um, you can take I, the stairs. I would say, like, you can take the stairs. Yeah. it's fine. No, that's gonna be the whole net. We that's got time. No, that's we cute. got time. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm just like, oh god, which version of the elevator? We're we're, we're, we're on our way to Dana's apartment, going up them steps. <laughs> she sleeps um, six feet above her covers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I like people need to hunt this out because, like. It, it, it's indie film at its finest. It's DIY, and it's a. I'm going to sound biased for saying this, but it's a really compelling and interesting story. So it, it's focused around an exorcism, but there's so much more happening within the exorcism. Yeah. Um, and wanting wanting our lead actress to to fight through and yeah, we we want her to survive. We we we. We've cut, we've uh, constructed characters that you want to root for, and people that that you really like to see on camera and like to see them interact. The story kicks off um, with with like an early demon thing, and uh, it goes into a failed suicide attempt. And the our main character um, tries to hang herself, and while she's in the mid limbo of death, and her body is an open vessel. It becomes inhabited by something else. Serves so right. it's it, it's such yeah, a exactly. horrible, horribly efficient way of trying to kill yourself. I mean, Jesus, there's <laughs> there's so many better ways of ha- than hanging. Like, come on, 
yeah, exactly. Shawshank Redemption yeah. much. Yeah. No. Maybe See, I, <laughs> when, I, when I have that in mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack a little bit, do a call back to, you know, about Rose having a little bit of meat on her, being a little fat. One of the things that um, stuck in my head about this is uh, I was watching a movie with family friends. We were watching, I think, The Mummy. And it was when Brendan Fraser's character hung and he survived. And my, my buddy's family, oh. they're a little bit on the chunkier side. And I'm not. And I wasn't at that time. And his mom leans over to me and goes, like, you see why he survived? I'm like, because it's a movie? She's like, no, it's because he's skinny. Fat people like me are next would have broken like that. You you would have suffered. You would have hung there and you would have suffered. I was like, damn, okay. Not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah, you would have no, wrong. You would have hung out there like a turkey. I had, that, <laughs> I had that in mind when I was writing the hanging scene and like laughing of like her her feet are swaying in the fucking wind and it's because she's not big, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but there were those accounts in, especially like the Old West, of people having survived multiple hanging attempts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, we're going to try next Thursday. Like, oh, we'll see if this will take. <laughs> well, that's why they had to change it to you hanging until you did. Yeah. I think if you survived it, they should be like, all right, you know, we're going to call it even. I'm like, yeah. no. There's a higher like, power. After 20 minutes, like, cool, we're just going to call it even and just like, you go fill out your day. Yeah. You're not so going to do, do that. Anymore. So, when you guys okay. want to call this, like, uh, are we going to get lunch? Yeah. <laughs> we going to break for lunch? after a while. But that was kind of the fun part with aphasia was that we've we've worked with a lot, every, almost every actor in aphasia has been a part of our team for a long time. Yeah. So, with our lead actress, Brandon has written multiple attempts of trying to hang her over the years. And with a low budget, you've got to get creative. So, this was the first time we actually got to. Hang her uh, correctly. Hang her correctly and, and effectively. Effectively, and even she got so excited that it worked that like we were all equally invested yeah. in like this stunt. That that's, it was. That's probably the was, only setting that you can actually say yeah. that sentence, and it doesn't sound murdery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, you know, the thing she we've got done affected, to her. She got excited at how we hung her. Like we were killing her properly, and she was screaming from the rafters. Yeah. Yay! The you're killing me. Her. Yeah, I, I had her in a short She's film as like a been... a pregnant junkie. We had to teach her how to, and how to I taught her how to how to cook and shoot heroin. And she was just <laughs> like, you know, you learn something new every time. Like we work together. To her, I just like every kill, everything we put her in. She's yeah. never been the same character twice, and I think that's. What the fun part is is every actor we put them in different roles and we challenge them to what they what yeah. they can do and what we can direct them to do and it's all right fun. yeah next next, cha- next challenge astrophysics yeah <laughs> you pick the yeah, person we'll I can get on that astrophysics is the next challenging yeah. role like all right guess what you're gonna be Neil deGrasse Tyson that's who you are yeah. in this role oh yeah we can do it. get good bud but um <laughs> get good but uh yeah I think like with with the story like it's it's a story about like yeah, there's a there's possession and stuff like that, but like with the undertones, it's a lot about there's a lot of of pressure and facing your past and there it's just a like a That's, thing. I mean, I wasn't joking when I was saying it was a coming of age. Like no, yeah, like, it's a coming I, of age. My version that I tell my mother is like, oh, you know, a girl goes through a rough time and you know, a priest helps her. I was gonna be like, oh yeah, she tries to kill herself and it's an exorcism yeah. and this and that. But you know, I, mean, yeah, it's very much <laughs> I love that. This is yeah. what I tell my mom like. You know, it's a girl going through a tough time. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's the soft yeah, pitch. I mean, it's, it's the, the soft pitch. You're not pitch. wrong, but you're like, <laughs> yeah. all right, well, how do I sell this to Gam Gam? Um, okay, it's a girl. Uh, well, I mean, she'll be, uh, both of our moms will be at the premiere, so I can't wait to see the look of disappointment that they'll have for us. <laughs> tell, us when, tell, us when, tell us everything. Tell us where and tell us when. Yeah. It's going to happen. Okay, so, uh, yes. Aphasia, um, I'm very ecstatic to say that we have a sold out premiere. World premiere. World premiere. Oh! Um, in Philadelphia. Okay. Philomoca next Saturday, February 17th. Oh, that's so this awesome. Saturday. Nice. What is it? Yeah. It's, it's Sunday. Yes. It's Sunday, this Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah, so we just sold out tickets, and wow. then we have to cram a few more tickets in, and we sold that out, too. Yeah, so... so we are double sold out for this world premiere. Yeah, we double oh, booked it. Yeah. I'm so happy for you guys. That's so great. So how many days is it going to be showing? Just that one day? Or is it going to so be shown again? For our... 
our control of screening is going to be at Filamoca for the main screening. We're working okay. through the convention okay. circuit to try to get some film festivals. Mm. And then I would love to do a screening at Mom. Uh, yeah, I want to do stuff. a screening at, at um, Tattooed Moms. So there will definitely be more screenings, but the initial one is going to be in February. So we all we have um, a lot of cast crew that's coming out, a lot of family and friends. We have some distribution companies that we're interested yeah. in. We um, have a pod, another podcast that we work with. Yeah, um, our friends, uh, they're, they're YouTubers. They're called Reanimator Reviews. Our friends, um, Ray and Joey, are uh, coming down. They live, uh, I think, closer to the Poconos. They're in Pennsylvania as okay. well. They're another beautiful horror couple that run a YouTube channel. So they're, they're going to help host the night with us. Yeah, they're going to come down. They're going to do a Q&A and moderate and stuff like that for that's us. Awesome. And I can't wait to meet yeah. them. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it we have that coming, and we we got the email like the other day of like one hundred percent sold out, and wow. like my and brain we broke. And we tried to cram in more, and then we sold that out. Yeah, that is fantastic. Congratulations, guys! Oh my god, Thank you. congrats! Congratulations. That's huge, man. It's huge, especially wow. for a couple from Philly. We are all about the Pennsylvania love around here, especially. Uh, you don't yeah, have to be we're, from we're Delco. Working with Phil Walker. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, you got to come to Philly because Philomoca is an amazing local venue that helps us out, and they do a lot of local film screenings and concerts and different yeah. things. And um, how do we we worked with them? Like we did so, a fundraiser um, with them years. Yeah, ago. so years ago, uh, Philomoca got hit with this like a zoning? a zoning thing from the state, and it really fucked them up to where they were going to have to shut down. So we did a, a charity art show at Tattooed Moms. And I'm, I think like, what, which one was it? Do you remember? It was probably, uh, was probably the uh, the uh, monsters. monsters one. We did a monster themed like art a, show. Yeah. Monster movie. Monster movie theme. So we had like people that painted like Godzilla figure, like Godzilla paintings and movie monsters. And um, for that show, it was that show because I remember I created a cardboard city and put it on the pool table at mom's. And at the end of the night, we had everyone come and destroy this city. Like they were kaiju, and uh, this couple came dressed up as Mothra and Godzilla, and like kicked it off. And uh, we raised like we raised a decent amount of money for them, and a hundred percent of the money from that charity went to Philomoca to help them, to help them get yeah. keep their doors open. So I mean, and that that was what like eight years later, yeah. we we reached out and said, hey, we're looking for a venue. They remembered. Yeah, and, and Eric was like, oh yeah, like I know you yeah. guys, I know all your stuff. You guys helped yeah. us out, and like and we want to help you guys out. Them. So like it was it was community it was it was like this is the definition of like community and art families of like everyone like you do this and I do this like there's no reason why we can't play in the same sandbox because yeah. yeah creatives to be. need to be creative. Well, and on our podcast network, there's a term that was coined by my podcast partner Katarina Thermoscara, and it is perjangers perjanging. And it, a perjanger is a person or group who are love and infatuated with nerd and geek culture. And the best part about that is that you can be a nerd or a geek about anything. So at the end of the day, the answer is 42, whatever you want it to be. Let's pick mm -hmm. it out from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yep, love it. We come full circle. But it's very much 42 of what you're doing. You know, you're, you're, you're putting out the product that you want. And especially I appreciate that five years going on six of editing pretty much all the podcasts that come out on this media network. Um, the one thing I, I had to ask you is that I saw an image on your social media uh -oh. and it's not as bad as you think because this is like a weird nerdy thing that I link on. But right. okay, do you use DaVinci Resolve as your editing software? I don't. What do you, um, what do I you do use? everything. I do everything in uh, Premiere Pro. Oh, I knew it was one of because I used to use Premiere Pro. I used to use Sony Vegas. Now I'm using DaVinci Resolve because it's free and it blows all of them out of the water. I think. Okay, it is free. I wasn't sure if it was free or not because oh I was I was I love it. You can on getting rid of Adobe. You can subscribe to where like um if uh like I you can like uh with my company Project and Wall Hanger subscribe my podcast partner Chris and I can share editing products uh, projects back and forth. Uh, so there's oh, nice. different functionality that they add into the subscription product. Uh, but the free version is what I use on like all of my editing stuff here for at least like 
200 podcast. Um, it is okay. an amazing software. I went ahead and I used the premiere version that arr, might not have been purchased. I don't know. I can't <laughs> remember. Or as they say, legally, I do not recall. Um, <laughs> so the free portion of uh, Da Vinci Resolve really spoke out to me. But I had to ask because I I, I always love to turn people on to Da Vinci Resolve because a lot of people are paying for premiere and it you don't need to do that. Let me tell you, brother, yeah. there is a free land, and it is great. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to look into it because uh, me and um, our uh, our camera guy, our DP Chris, um, we both use Adobe, and we've been like trying to find a better editing software. And like, I like Adobe. It's it's I've honed in on Adobe. I've been using it for a couple mm -hmm. years, and I, I've honed mm -hmm. in into it, and I can. I know it like the back of my hand. You get used to it. You get used to like, yeah. all right, this is how I do this. I know how to do this. But with, yeah, and it's with like, I started Vinci, on Avid, it's better. So, yeah, I started on Avid and just grew from there. I never mm. did Final Cut because I'm very anti-Apple. Oh, and, good. Um, Me too. Um, <laughs> thank you. But and that's, I stay away from Apple products. That's my, my podcast partner, uh, business partner, rather, Chris Bristow. He is doing all of the editing for uh, two local pro wrestling leagues, uh, Super Crazy and Aricha Wrestling. We're going to be credited okay. in uh, March with videography and editing. And DaVinci Resolve is what he's using. Um, he gets these really great um, 1080p, 60 frame per second cameras, and he captures everything, which... <laughs> That's half the battle right there of just getting the great resolution in your capturing and the editing software with DaVinci. It has like four programs built into one Fairlight for audio. You have sound uh, for uh, you have video rather. And overall, just a really great program. If I'm going to give them a free plug, because I do use yeah. their product like every day. I used it twice today. I don't have a problem. No. Oh. Just going to get more of that Da Vinci. Fine. Yeah, I just got to get it <laughs> hooked up into the right vein. You know, the one collapse. Yeah, exactly. and I'll find another one. <laughs> um, but That's good to know. So I really want to look into that. It, it is a great program. It's a great software, especially if you're looking at being an indie artist. You have to look at those things like it, uh, Adobe is a good program, but you have to pay for it. Um, if you're not going yeah. to be a pirate. And you, yes. it, it, with DaVinci, it's a free software that's giving indie artists the proper tools to do what they need to make their content become a reality. And it's one yeah. of the – I like to always talk to indie content creators on this podcast because it's you're going to find a lot more of an original idea from them than you are from any of the bigs right now. And yeah. it's – important to know for the indie person that hey maybe there's another software or another thing that is easier or cheaper on my overhead to where now i'll have some more money to put into something else because i'm not paying for this and oh, absolutely I and I like need. yeah and one thing that i always try to like uh push onto any any creator like whether uh artist filmmaker musician whatever like don't be ashamed of your gear and what you do because like your final product is what's going to speak for it um we had a short film um be selected for this uh like halloween thing over in jersey so we went and um our, our film played with a bunch of other like really awesome indie film guys and it was a nice little horror group and they brought us on for a Q and A, and they're talking about um, equipment. And they're going off, and like you know, this is what they had, and it's fine. They're like, "Oh, we worked with like these Ari light kits and Black Magics, and did all this." And they get to us, and I'm like, "I lit this entire short film with floodlights I bought from Home Depot for twenty bucks and a piece of paper diffuser, <laughs> and our boomstick was a hockey stick that had our fucking mic gaff tape to it, and obviously." It, the end product was well enough that you guys really liked it and brought us here to show it and talk about it. You wouldn't have thought that. So no, like don't be ashamed of it yeah. because like a, a dual floodlight from Home Depot that they use for construction sites, 30 bucks, 
will be your great the greatest key light you will ever find, and all you got to do is just fill it in. And but, but here's the thing: your shit. is when I'm uh, the one thing I really love that Disney Plus does right now is when they put out a Star Wars or a Marvel product, they'll have that behind the scenes thing. And you'll get to see how they made that product, especially for like uh, the Mandalorian, the season one. You, they've you found out they tapped into the 501st to fill out mm. roles they needed, you know, and you see different kind of stuff like that. But in all of those behind the scenes footage, you will see Home Depot slash Lowe's floodlights all over the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you do what you need to do to stay in budget and to make sure that because like at least with us like our biggest asset for any film set is feeding everyone you know people are here to work with us and this and that and we want to make sure that that they're well taken care of if we can't provide something financially we want to be able to provide like nourishment and a good time yeah, you, know? you know so we make every meal from scratch every set and uh, a lot of our Cast and crew had various allergies, so every single meal on aphasia was was vegan and yep. most of the time gluten free and nut free, and and I accommodated everything every time and yeah. took wow. care of it. I mean, That's big. I think the only time I didn't, I think the only time I didn't cook something was the one time I got a hoagie tray because we were at a church. Yeah, and I couldn't. We couldn't cook. Them. I couldn't plug things in because it was like an old church. Yeah. But otherwise, I cooked every single meal. So. Wow, well, I mean that checks out too. I mean, old church is yeah. not really. Yeah. yeah, that was a wild one. That was a that was a great set, and when people see aphasia, they'll see it and be like, "Ah, yeah. we would have blown the whole fucking circuit if we plugged in a crock pot." Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the power of faith compelled us that day. Yeah, so I got to go. <laughs> Satan was about to speak to everybody, but you didn't plug in that crock pot. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Wow. That's awesome, though. I mean, uh, I definitely, definitely want everybody to check out Aphasia. I like the kind of exorcist yeah. vibes that I get from, you know, your description. And especially the fact that you're an indie content creating couple. And you're both on the same level. Mm -hmm. You have, I feel, you both complement each other. Almost like a yin and yang. You know, it's whenever he's, ta he's talking, I feel like you're like, yeah, but he's forgetting this. Whenever and vice versa, Usually. it's 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 that kind of <laughs> that odd couple kind of perfection that works out. You know, it yeah. it, it really speaks to it, and I hope mm -hmm. it speaks out to your final finished product of aphasia. Because I want to have, I want to be able to say, I've had multiple indie award winning indie filmmakers on this podcast. We um, are award winning. Yeah, we, we we are award winning. Uh, we God had, damn it, I can uh, then. There we go. You, yeah. did, you did what I want. We, We're good. We've had, we've had uh, one of our short films won for Best Actor. Um, we've been nominated for Best best uh, Film, Best uh, best Writer. We had two Best Actors. We had two we had... Best Actors. Yeah, we, we, you can say that. You can, you can put that laurel on, on your podcast. Yeah, thank we God. Were, we were. All right. All right. Yeah. I will. I was going to say it anyway, but thank God. Now I can say it honestly. Yeah, you know? yeah we, we're not good at uh, recognizing our accomplishments. No, not at all. Yeah. Well, it's big because I was talking. I was talking to. It's not uh, easy. It's not easy. You know? It isn't so, easy. You know. All right, because I was right. talking to Injetta Anthony, and he had uh, two films that he did: uh, Supreme uh, uh, Creatures of Necessity and Supreme Beings. And both of them, he took them out to the indie circuit, and he won awards and everything. And one of the things he told me is one of the reasons why his films did so well is because in the indie market the actors if you cast right their passion surpasses everything else you know um the i always forget the one actress's name but she was very impressive in um creatures of necessity and he told me she would say no i need another take because she knew she could go deeper into that role mm -hmm. and get that kind of passion from the indie actors and actresses that you don't really or can't see in the mainstream prod projects as easily. Yeah. And it's like, and in, and in the indie scene too, like when we're, when we're on set, we, uh, we treat everyone as an equal 
and it's like okay like we have we have the script and the script is as i always put it it's a guideline so like the lines that are written down you don't have to know verbatim just get the tone right say you know it doesn't have to be matched or whatever like just say it how you feel it is emotionally with the tone and we'll workshop it and now granted sometimes we may spend a little too long on a scene but we're making sure that the scene is right and at the same time having a good time because you know i we trust who we hired and the people who came on our set trust us to be able to construct and like conduct the scene and it's like no i don't need to look at my camera because i know Chris is our camera guy, and I know what he's seeing is going to be right. I don't. I will give a brief like conversation, and Joe will give a brief conversation to actors. Be like, you're feeling this, and I want you to deliver more or less of that. And they they run with it, and we'll do multiple takes, hitting the ranges. And yeah, they'll say, uh, "What if I say this line?" Here's the beauty: like we're not shooting on film; we're shooting on a memory card. Like we can mm-hmm. delete the card, we can delete it from the card, and go back in. We have that luxury. And there's no reason why we can't exploit it and take advantage of that when it's like, no, we can do this. We can run it. I'm not saying let's run the camera for an hour and a half because I have to sit there and scrub through it. Oh, man. As an editor, I know. I feel that. I feel that. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'd rather have like 60 mini clips rather than one hour and a half long clip. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of our awards was uh, one of our actors won for best actor who was my manager in the bakery of Whole Foods that just wanted yep. to help us out one time when we were short. Um, an actor didn't work and he's like, oh, I'll give it a shot. And then he ended up winning for best actor because he yep. was so excited <laughs> to do it. And he... That's awesome. That's awesome. And he was so hey, happy. Really it was amazing. Hey, and that passion really shined through. Sure. I'll help you with your yeah. project. And best, yeah. best actor yeah. goes to... Yeah. yeah, and we we sat there and like we screamed like scream laughed. We're like, holy uh, shit! Yeah, it's like, you gotta be kidding me. And we're like, no, really, this is like it's so perfect. Yeah, it was uh, amazing. And awesome. he did such a great job. Uh, yeah, he was so awesome. excited because it's sometimes some of our more seasoned <laughs> actors have the least amount of passion because they're just coming in as another job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's and, and, like, we, we worked. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. It was, it's, it's, it was hilarious for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's big, it's fun, and it's just like, you know, who? there's no reason to be ashamed. Like, belt your heart out. Like I also think that speaks volumes to you giving them space to direct and give them space to try it, and, and we just make it comfortable. We're like, oh, you yeah. do it again. Like, whatever, we make idiots of ourselves and we laugh at it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's fine. Because, like, I make it a point to be like, I will never put someone in a situation that I wouldn't put myself in. So, like, mini spoiler alert in aphasia, I die. Like, I'm in the... We're both in the movie. We're both in the movie, but I get beat with a Bible. So, like, it's great. That's so cool. So, I made... Like, I wanted everyone to know, it was like, whatever you guys are going through, like, I'm going to go through it with you in any way that I can. So, we had this, like, 30-pound family Bible we haggled at a flea market, and I got beaten to death with it, like, in the face. And at one point, like... The book slipped and like cracked me like in the jaw. You're not beating me like... hard enough. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, right. It was great. It was it was it was such a good time. Wow. Wrong direction. Wrong direction. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nurse. I went to yeah. Catholic school, I swear. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, there is a masochism that is tied into, uh, you know, any kind of production work there a little bit, especially Mr. Matt's a pad on bloody knuckles, you know. I mean, like, especially when you like you're like hour and twenty five minutes, you have to come through, man, dude. I did a four hour podcast on Christmas. Okay, that was a marathon to edit because you're going through four hour. I made it two two episodes. It, it, it was like Frank tapped out and I'm like, yeah. nah, I'm going, I'm going, there's more here. So being able to like produce something is one thing, but then to be able to sit behind the editing booth and be like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, the benefit was that Brandon was editing the whole time while we were, while we yeah, were that filming, is the so benefit. He we were, did it. <laughs> uh, so that was a good thing because I mean, we were also able to show everyone how things were coming. We were able to get them excited. We realized things we might've missed. Um, 
we were able to really like grow with it. We also, I mean, we went through that movie so many times and cut so much shit out of it. And then there's like references that we found funny that are completely gone. So they just say like the, you know, the jar. Oh like, yeah. Just random shit that like, it just doesn't make sense anymore. And it's fine. But like we went through and cut out so much crap because we've been filming for four years and we just kind of kept growing That's with awesome. it. And we had, we had makeup effects that we never ended up using. So just time and budget and different things like, went in yeah. different directions. So like, we really learned as we went that entire process yeah. and filming and shooting and budgeting and the whole thing was a, yeah. we learned wow. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I imagine learning for the next know. movie, you know, on yeah. what yeah. not to do. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, it was like one of the first things was, uh, we stick to a shooting schedule. That's not four years and get it done. And maybe in two a, years, maybe. And shooting in 30 days and then maybe the cut can be two years. If you're looking for a goal, two years out, out of four, it, I think if we cut that in I, half. Exactly. It's I, a I good don't think goal. you go from four years to 30 days. I think just had to go a little like. No, no, no that's great. Yeah, yeah. That is I, mass I, kiss. Also, a lot of it was also COVID. Like, there's no one who had positive in the yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, it's all step down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think that we're going to go from four years to 30 days? Like, no, that's not going to. You're funny. Oh man! It's I like believe it or not, I don't care. Dan's story, I don't care how much podcast. funding you get, like from four years to thirty yeah. days, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. That's a bit of a stretch. You know, I mean, ninety, ninety's doable. Ninety's doable. Well, game of, guy for trying. Okay. You know, Game of Thrones and and Lost could could have done it for less, but you know, I feel like you guys will you'll you'll keep your head on your shoulders and really you know yeah. expand out. Properly, you will. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping so. Like, I really want. I want aphasia to be the um to like really be like for me. <coughs> excuse me. My one of my my biggest influence is like Sam Raimi with The Evil Dead, mm -hmm. and that was like in the back of my mind this entire time in aphasia that when I was going through. You know, self doubt was like, just, this is just taking so long. Like, I'm never going to get this done. Like, I'm sitting here in the edit and, like, I can't get this scene to work. And I'm just, like, really, like, railing into myself. And then, like, kind of, like, triggering back to, like, looking at who I looked up to and, like, re reflecting on, I guess, past heroes and influences and be like, no, like, Ramey, Rob Tappert, and Bruce Campbell were like trying to sell it like salesmen going door to door, and it, it took them, it took them like five times longer to shoot the first Evil Dead film Still than it did very, for us. Um, invasion. A very cult classic yeah. film, even to this day. Yeah, exactly. And it's like that's that's kind of what I want this to be as as like I want people to take it in. Or like the film as a whole, I want people to enjoy the film and take something away from it. Whether it is uh, our, um, we have amazing uh, practical effects. The film is one hundred percent practical effects, and we have like we had a really great makeup artist, uh, Jake F Jade Varekia. I almost said her other name um, of Necro Effects came in and really fucking killed it. We also knew each other since we were like fourteen. We grew up together. And like whether they take the effects out of it or the story or something, I want people to understand like, no, it was not easy and you're going to be human and be like, no, I, I, I want to hang myself trying to do this thing with Ethernet cables and shit like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, no, we, we got this done and I'd rather people take away from this thing of like, if I can do it, if we can do it, like anyone can do this stuff because there's no limitation on on art there's no there shouldn't be limitations on it because you can do you can do whatever you want to do with it but it's also being able to accept that you know some things are going to have to change you have to be flow you have to be able to flow with it and let it and let it go and that's what i want people to take away from aphasia as a whole and just jerks as a whole you know like you, you say like you know what you guys do with with like your podcast. Like there's that strong passion. Like people can can ride on that. And I love that. And um, what what was your saying? Uh, Perjammers be perjamming. Perjangers perjanging. Yeah, I can't say jerks be jerking. It's a whole other thing. But we can get on that context and ride with it. You know. <laughs> jerks are jerking, man. What do you know? What do you mean? <laughs> 
This yeah, is a perfect thing. I didn't have anything to do with that name. Which hit in all I the way. I came in with the name. I didn't choose it. Uh, I didn't choose Perjangers either, but, you know, I mean. Yeah, some things are decided for you. You yeah. get in where you get in, you know. You, exactly. Uh, it's, it's a household name now. It is now. It is, yeah. you know. <laughs> it, it's And so horror, it's a lot of people's intro level. It was my intro level to writing. I did a, a animated web anthology a horror series with my friend Joe Palladino called uh, Tales of the Morgue, Unfortunate Deaths in Unfortunate Ways. And evolving out from that, do is there a different style of film that you would like to do outside of horror? It, did you want to do like a satirical version of superheroes? Do you want to do a, a slice of life? Maybe, you know, reality show? I um, mean... I, I always wanted to do a slice of life film. Like I grew up like watching movies like Empire Records and Reality Bites and things like that. And movies that like had a plot, but it was very character driven. Like I love Kevin Smith films mm -hmm. and for such character driven movies that it's like you had to be there in that moment to get it. And like, that's what I, one of the things that I've always wanted to do and um, I'm actually tackling my first genre change in about 15 years where I'm writing um, a in three days in three days that's going to be done. Well, it's going to be done tomorrow it better be done for tomorrow. three days. Um, I'm writing a romance story, like a kind of like a teen romance story, because um, we in in uh, combining all of our efforts with Jill's baked goods and my writing stuff, we work with a meadery in Wilmington, Delaware called Liquid Alchemy. And we're doing an event on Valentine's Day called Dining in the Dark, which is, um, it's an event for Valentine's Day. People can come out. They're good. We did it on, on, we did it in October. in October last year where people were blindfolded. And I was telling a story, an original story that I wrote while people are blindfolded and they're getting a dessert and a pairing with one of the means or ciders that they make. So they're trying these things like while being encapsulated with the story, the story is related to the desserts and drinks and they're eating. That it sounds knowing awesome what it is. or creepy. I mean, yeah. really, if I'm calling so a spade cool. a spade, that is either really yeah. awesome or really creepy. All of the <laughs> Especially above. if you're Our going Halloween towards one. a horror one, like, yeah. whoa, I never bud. Didn't push it as <laughs> I, I learned a lot from the first one, the baking wise. This time for Valentine's Day is going to be a lot more texture focused, uh, and it's going to make people really uncomfortable, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch them guess. So like for horror, like for the uh, Halloween one, there was one that they were eating red velvet brains, and there was like an edible blood on top. It was very gooey and disgusting. And yeah, this one's going to be a lot of different textures to make them uncomfortable. So yeah. kind of like. Now um... I Weird. When you did that, uh, like they had it at like a, a bunch of like school, of, uh, like fairs and stuff like that, to where they would do stuff for, for Halloween. It was like, oh, put your hand in here. Oh, this is brain. Yeah, yeah. it's that idea. Hey, that was the biggest influence. Like my like my influence came from the uh, Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors episode when all the kids close their eyes and they're passing around the spaghetti and the grapes and this is the witch's hair. And it's like, mom, we didn't get the grapes yet. We didn't get the eyeballs. Yet. Like that was the influence for dining in the dark was I wanted, I want to do something like this. Yeah. Cause like the owner pitched the idea of dining in the they dark. They had gone to a dining in the dark type experience and they really liked it. And we, we do monthly pairings where I'll make up, uh, four different desserts to go with the specific theme and pair them with their drinks. So we're there every month doing these different experiences. And we wanted to combine Brandon's uh, writing. And so he's writing an original story. He combines my desserts into the universe that fit in the story. I make up five different brand new desserts that no one's seen yet. Yeah. And then we pair them with their drinks. So it's completely new. This time is uh, brand new. Like the desserts I'm making are some that I've never made before at all of the style of desserts are completely new for me. That is awesome. So it's a little for as all. It's a really fun place to like try everything and just see what sticks, throw it all at the wall and just be safe together and yeah. have a good time. So it's, it sounds fun. Like, you get some really funny. 
It is. Well, we do have tickets available. Uh, so you can go through Liquid Alchemy. It's on February 14th, at, I think, 7 o'clock. Yeah. Hours are start at 7. And then uh, so send, it's uh, $45 per person. So send, send me the uh, link. We'll and send I'll, you I'll, I'll add it yeah. in the description of this podcast. Totally, yeah. Because I think a lot of people will actually really like that yeah, experience. Oh, freeze. Freeze frame. Freeze frame? Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Okay, there we go. I think I was just good. there you go. We're You're back. Free. Okay. Yeah. I was saying like I literally froze yeah, the whole thing. Like, uh, no, I don't think they. And they, we're sorry, back sorry. from um, this uh, it, 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 podcast it sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. Send us the link. I mean, that's awesome. Where to find you? You know, uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like to go. Usually, at this point of the podcast, yeah. we ask uh, where we're going to be able to see you, but we know we're we're going to be able to see you uh, next, which is the Great Media Comic Con on April thirteenth and fourteenth. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll be there 13th and 14th. Uh, you will be... I will be there on just the Sunday because I'm double booked that weekend with the uh, Philadelphia Punk Rock Flea Market. So it's I'll be in Philly on Saturday. I'll be in Philly on Sunday. It's a wonderful problem. I don't have staff yet to have help to be able to split myself. It's literally just two of us. Yeah. Uh, so Brandon's going to be going with the desserts and the film side to media i'll be in philly on that saturday and then we'll both be together on sunday in media yep. uh so i'm sorry right. to miss one of the days i don't want to but that is the joy of small business when you don't yeah. have anybody else yeah it, it, <laughs> so, i get it you know you're you're, only creative. A, you're a two-person team so you don't you only have yeah. so many options when it comes right. down to it yeah yeah absolutely we did it. we're making it work but you guys are making it work man thank you what did you say, Frank? I saw. I saw you. Yeah, you guys out. I mean, uh, I really can't. You know, you guys are awesome. You guys, I, I've known you for quite some time, so you guys have always been awesome. So, you know, to have you out the first time and then the second year. Now this is the second year. I mean, I look forward to it. You guys are just fantastic hanging out with. You know, thank you, know. you are too, and we always love, we love seeing you and seeing Evelyn and everybody. Yeah. And it's always it's always a good time when like. Like we we call like people like Frank and Evelyn and a bunch of other people in our community. We call them. Don't get confused. <laughs> the we, we're the, Fu the Fuse family because uh, everyone met and linked up at our Fuse Underground Art Show. Well, that, we found Frank in the hallway at Pancakes and Booze. Yeah, we met Frank at Pancakes and Booze. <laughs> that yeah. checks out the hallway. Yeah, no, that checks out the hallway. In the hallway. Never this man, finding you in the hallway. look, yeah. this man loves the room. Okay. Oh, Wherever I may roam, that what was that Metallica song? They were talking about Frank. He's yeah. just a wanderer, you know. Yeah. He puts his head down on a rock. <laughs> that's where he sleeps. He's he, he, he called me the wanderer. That's Dion. That's not <laughs> Metallica. You're getting your decades crossed, you know. Either way, or, or you can be Iggy Pop, you know, the wanderer. Iggy Pop. There you go. Yeah. Um. But no, yeah, he is a wanderer because we randomly ran into him at 4th Street Deli in South Philly. Out of nowhere, yeah. we just go in for lunch and I see Frank just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. That checks out. Yeah. That, that honestly that. checks out. Look, I'm lucky enough to have a podcast with him. If not, it would be like, where is Waldo? I would never know where this man is. <laughs> like, ever. I, I would just hear recountings of the tales of people who saw Frank Percy. <laughs> And he just sat there, and he was, he liked it. He enjoyed it, because people walked up to me, and he says, you know, so, hey, I go, hey, just enjoy it, man. Just, you know, take it in. Don't worry about it, you know? So Yeah, because I don't know what about, a, about, a, about a half a million people by now think that I am Frank Percy, because this man likes to walk away from his table. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Like, oh, my God, Dude, your artwork really is so does, great. When we were at media... We, we were like like a table and a half away from Frank and media last year. And I would walk over and I'm looking at what, what Frank displayed. No Frank, just Frank's work displayed. And he had an issue of Sleepwalker. And I was like, oh, fuck. I got to get that. I got to get that cover. Where the fuck is Frank? And I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to the table and wait for him to come back. And I see him. And I was like, all right, cool. Here's my opportunity. Then he just goes off again. And I'm like, I need this goddamn comic book. 
<laughs> like no one else knows this character and i love this character from marvel and i'm just like it's like i need to get this book and i finally tracked them down i was like money take it and give me the book. <laughs> you gotta, oh, i was so you happy to find you, you, you gotta get peg it. them down like that uh like that gremlin that has a bag of money in it in a whole bunch of video games and you gotta mm -hmm. follow it and kill it he, he's that gremlin with a bag of money on it he's just running around and you gotta find him. You yeah. gotta catch him. Impossible. Part of the game. I love it. I was like, I need this issue, and then he just keeps leaving. Oh my god! Yeah, we're so excited to be I back think in April. Should be you, know, you, you should go yeah. find other people around you and go meet you them, say hello. You didn't I'm even like, know you're going to be in a Comic Con version of Catch Me If You Can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was a part of one of the many things we loved about the Media Comic Con, which is I've never seen a more inclusive and safe place for people. Everyone had such a great time. Like, we yeah. love talking to everybody. We've been talking about it all year long, like encouraging everyone to join us, whether to vend or just attend. Oh, yeah. And I just, I, and that's the, the joy of the Media Con, like that everyone was safe. I could walk away from my table. I knew everything was going to be fine if I walked away for two seconds. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, Frank was wandering more than that. But, like, you know, we can wander away and look after each other's stuff. But it just, like, uh, one of the our friends that joined us, Dan, uh, Dan Krause with Dangerous Art, he was so excited. He's like, I found my people. Like, this was his crowd. And yeah. he had such a good time. And it was, it really speaks volumes to, like, the, the vendors you had and the groups of people that you guys had come out and how safe we all felt to, like, enjoy ourselves and be ourselves yeah there. it was really amazing I, I, that's that's one of the other things that i'm really looking forward to this april is just like getting to see who my neighbor is going to be like i'm so yeah. stoked to like meet the other vendors and i see yeah. the list that you guys got and seeing some familiar faces and some new faces and i just i can't wait to just chat you know and yeah. just be like oh you do this cool thing like let's let's talk and like swap or something you know like art most, trade and most and of the guests that yeah. i've had on this podcast recently have all been from the great media comic con last year and it it mm. really speaks to oh it because God. one of the guests that i keep having on because he is an amazing person and frank and i have both gravitated around him but it's a limb of uh, the diary of sweet pea this guy yeah. it was his first con last year and he has been on Perjangers and Wallhangers multiple times. He's part of our Dun he's part of our Dungeons and Dragons league that we're doing. Um, oh, he's hell yeah. an amazing person. But when you're talking about meeting the different people at the con, it is a whole other kind of experience. Getting to experience the people in the con community, the vendors, the artists, and all that, because everybody has their own idea or project that they want to push out there but the community level of it of everybody pushing and building each other up is really it's one of the things that we really believe here on projectors and wall hangers which is building everybody else up because it's going to build yeah. everyone up at the same time and it's that same kind of uh of Network. understanding in the con mm -hmm. community which really lends itself mm -hmm. to this podcast format and you guys speak to it in and of itself because you have a great idea, great confectionery treats, great idea with your movie. And we wish you all the continued success. Many, many Love more you. awards are in your future, I feel. Thank you. You guys are yeah, awesome. I mean, love you guys. Yeah, and we and we love you guys and we want we want to, you know, pay it forward with everyone cuz like no one like I don't I don't care who you are. You can't do something alone. Like you need you need that support and like you need people by your side that believe in you and to be able to give it back to you as well. And like that's what that's what being an artist should be. Like it's not it's not a one player game like a lot of people like to seem that it that it is. Mm -hmm. And being a creative and pushing these things, it's like no, like you got you need your hype man and you need to hype up the other people because like you know like people don't understand like an artist made the shirt that you're wearing artists are making every bit of media that you're consuming until the ai it's, come in yeah it's you artist. got it yeah 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 uh, um not to be the debbie downer but i'm just saying there is that <laughs> ai overlord in the background we can enjoy your artwork there, there while is, we have it they're fucking lurking like Sauron, and I'm not into it. And it's just like, 
but yeah, but yeah it, it, it and it comes with that. It comes with that mutual love and respect that artists can give to each other. And it's like, you know, I I want to be excited when someone is making something or tell me an idea. And I want them to be excited when I pitch an idea or when Jill's like, try this new thing that I did. And that's what makes the art world go around is like our love for each other and what we do and the respect that we have for everyone who can say like, I finished a comic book. I finished a painting. I finished a movie. I finished something. You completed it. You deserve respect and love with that. And that's what it all should be. Yeah. 100%. Because it's 100%, yeah. it's, it's supporting everyone else around you, you know. And as long as Jill doesn't say, this tastes disgusting, try it. I think you should just eat whatever she gives you. I <laughs> I mean, I do sometimes. Well, no, she does because, like, I do. well, my flavor palette is way different. Than yours. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like, I fucked up your cookies. I fucked up a couple cookies, but I fucked them up as in like they tasted like trick cereal, yeah. and I didn't want them. No, that's not a bad fuck. Like, here, eat them. Oh. Your your cookies no, taste like tricks. Up, like, oh, cry into my yeah. napkin. Yeah, what? But, like, but I'm the person that like I'll go to like Bath and Body Works with my sister and I'll pick out the worst smelling candle and be like, here, smell this one. Like I'll just purposely pick out the worst smelling things. But when it comes to my food, no, I mean you'll pretty much eat anything I hand you. You'll eat it. But yeah. you don't really like yeah. want to. I'll you don't really like, go for it, but you'll do it. Yeah. You'll eat it. I will eat it. Yeah. It's because really I enjoy it's sleeping really in a bed. <laughs> it's so mean. I'm like, cool. Will you please eat this thing? I need feedback. And you're like, I guess. I'm like, don't force. Wait, like, but don't I will, force you. But I will give you honest feedback. Yes, but you shouldn't have to force someone to eat a cookie. No, I know. I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel like yeah, it depends on the cookie. Like, are you saying oh, eat this? Oh, it I'm looks like a me. chocolate chip, but it's really an oatmeal raisin because that's a dirty trick. I will never accept anybody never passing thing. off a chocolate chip cookie and it being an oatmeal oh. raisin. That is unforgivable. Well, that's, that's what people think. Yeah, people think my stuff is soap or candles. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't mess with people like that. No, this is real food. We don't do that. We don't make candles that look like soap. No, that's rude. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah. Well. I think it's at least you don't have those uh, Harry Potter je uh, jelly beans in your lexicon there. I think that's a good uh, a good thing oh to ha God. not have. That was experience. That was a time. Nobody needs earwax muffins, eat. you know. Yeah, we all eat all those, every single one of them. Yeah, I did. I'm glad, you guys, great. I'm glad you guys did. I didn't oh, eat this. Man, I I oh yeah, I, I, ate, I, ate, I ate, ate it just the experience. I ate them all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I have really to like, bar flavor, of course. Give it to me. I'll fucking eat yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, God. I mean, like, I've eaten worse shit in my life that I feel like a bar flavored, like, jelly bean will not kill me. Oh, it won't kill you, but it won't taste good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can suffer You know, suffer that cyanide jelly bean didn't really pass the FDA. It no. tastes like real cyanide. Like, <laughs> I, I was a 90s kid. The things that went into my body for, for what was supposed to be food, I think I'm okay. Oh, please. It'll develop nice. as my, a my, problem <laughs> later on that your doctor will tell you about. My, Don't worry about that. Yeah, my, Let me tell you all about the 70s, okay? Please. Okay? <laughs> Fair. <laughs> This guy pop. This guy pops a bubble in any 90s or even 80s baby's oh, yeah. bubble yeah. okay he's like guess what okay. 70s bud yeah you're oh, right oh, thank you. it was horrible back then you're right of the 60s, please. i mean i just didn't recognize what it was i mean 70s i remember 60s a little hazy but you know man <laughs> what you did yeah, in the 70s and like that that's that's how my parents are they're the same way like my mom used to say like, you eat a pound of dirt before you die like enjoy it and I feel that helps the immune system. Take any though. bit of garbage. You know, a little bit of dirt. Absolutely, yeah. People aren't eating enough weird shit now. Not you, dude. Yeah. Don't eat no, weird no. shit. I've been a problem with him eating weird shit in the yard. <laughs> but mask a hero time uh, aside, um, we've really went everywhere and absolutely anywhere with this podcast. <laughs> 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 Which is how I love it. 
Um, yeah. We gotta have you back on. You give me a subject, I will rob you Williams the shit out of it. <laughs> what was that? I'm gonna be going live at the Great Media Comic Con this year. So um, Frank's gonna wander. I'm gonna wander around too, and I'm definitely gonna be talking to you guys because you know, Frank's wandering around. It's like wow, you know. It's like, I don't mean to make you sound yeah. like the senile grandpa, oh, but man. oh god, <laughs> Frank's wandering again. <laughs> I may wander away from it. I remember where I put the coffee, you know? It's like I'm looking for my cup of coffee. You get a little leash and put you in the pot and be like, where's Grandpa? Oh, no, it's just a tractor. No, it's and, fine. You know, I got a bell. I got a bell for him. He'll have a bell. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I now know that you're going to go live because, like, you're getting me on screen. You haven't gotten me in person yet. Oh, man. So. Um, I'm going to go live. I'm going to go live around the con. Um, I definitely have a lot of former guests and uh, hopefully future guests to talk to. Um, Carl Park's going to be there. Don't go after dark. The dad podcast. I've went on his podcast. Guy's amazing. There's a lot of amazing friends that I've met since the media comic con that have like, I love to say uh, in this podcast, Frank and I stumbled onto this. We, you know, just started talking and we started getting friends and other people started saying, Hey, let I want to be on too. And we, we keep reaching out because it's now become a hub for indie content creators. This is a podcast that you can come on. You can get your idea out onto, and we can have fun talking about it. It's a long format podcast to where you can get your whole idea out there. All the fans know what jerks productions is about. They know what they're going to get into when they see you at the Great Media Comic Con or any other cons that you could do now because this is the whole point that we'd like to do in this podcast to show everyone how amazing you guys are and what really highlights you above everybody else. And ultimately, the reason why they need to hunt Jerks Productions. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank Very you. Very much appreciate yes. that. I loved having you guys on. You're always welcome on this podcast. Um, whenever you. you have something to talk about, please, uh, please come join us on Kill of the Week. Oh, yeah, I would love, love to have you guys on Kill of the Week. Love to. Yeah. Let us. Know. We'll schedule it out. Let us know. We'd love to. I'd love to pop on. We love pop, cross podcast yeah. promotion. Yeah, absolutely. So that is what our fans but, have to look forward to in the future, but. We always end off this podcast the same way, gang, because we love you, we miss you, and we want to see you next time. Until then, game on, boys and girls! Bye bye! Bye! bye. bye. <laughs>came to me in my dreams last night and either it was a warning or, or a reminder that it's gone. How many drinks have you had? I always thought things would end up differently, you know? How so? Like, like I wouldn't back in this shitty time capsule of a neighborhood because I failed at Killing myself. The dark figures? The voices? I know you've heard them. Seen them. They're warning you or preparing you. Preparing me for what? Something is coming. Something big. Here is. I know who you are. You got it. Perfect track record so far
The dream really freaked you out, huh? And how do you say Brandon's last name? Tan Zach. Okay. Tan Zach. Tan Zach. Like, tan Zach. like Zach from Saved by the Bell, but you want him tan. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying word association for, for that's okay. I, I could I had to ask him multiple times. How do you pronounce that again? Tan Zach. Yeah. I said it's too many consonants the next to too few vowels and like wasn't quite sure. So I mean, whenever you don't... see a C next to a Z, I I definitely think Russian. Uh, I think they say. I think he said Ukrainian. Hey, close enough. So am I. <laughs> Bukarel, Mount Bukarel. Hey, I got an in. I got an in. All right, out of here, really. Yeah, there's actually a Bukarel candy company over in Ukraine too. Really? Oh yeah. Get out of here. Edge of the empire. Edge of the Carpathian Mountains is uh, uh, Mount Bukarel, and there's also Bukarel Canyon. One more time, Park. where? Mount Bukarel, yeah. Where, where, next to where? I got a mountain, next to the Carpathian what, Mountains. What, 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 next to the what mountains? Carpathian? There you go. Yeah, is that how you say it? I, Carpathian, I just, yeah. Oh. The wild of Romania. Yeah, man. Very, uh, yeah. Romania, a uh, uh, very, uh, very, very, um... Very poor country. Of Europe, I heard, yes. You know, farmers. Sure, but, you know. There was that one uh, movie, remember, it was, it had the, the, the giant in it, and he was from Romania, and it was like a comedy with, um, oh, what's his face? He was big in the 90s. He had, um, the, the frilly hair. Oh, his na name's on the tip of my tongue. Um, he was the the green eye, uh, green one eyed monster in Monsters Inc. Oof, I definitely Billy Crystal. That. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Crystal. Thank you, Big Brother. <laughs> I don't either, but it, that name was eluding me, and Big Brother just kind of like completely brought that out there. But yeah, Billy Crystal. Um. I don't know why I needed to get that name out, but I needed to get that name okay. out. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, Sometimes it just gets between your teeth, you know. You just gotta get it out. You know, you know it, it, yeah, brain farts just when they pop. Sometimes you lose the original idea, and you're just like, "Yeah, but thank God I said Billy Crystal." <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh man, I just released our Stephen Russell podcast. Um, he okay. he was an amazing guest. Um, we got to talk about his amazing comic, which uh, first off, like if me and you were podcasting and all of a sudden Superman just took out the back half of your room behind you, right? We'd right. prob we'd probably have to stop the podcast. No, no, hell no. We're going to keep on figuring out what the fuck's going on. Shit, I mean, that's when it just gets interesting. Now you're going to turn off the camera. Shit, ain't shit going on now. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, that whole thing gets wiped out. Fuck no! I'm gonna turn the goddamn fucking computer. You Did can... you see this? Song? Did you see this shit going on over here? You can grab the camera and keep following. Like there he goes. Oh, yeah. What's going on? That's great though. Oh man, you're you're staying true to the uh, broadcasting format. You know, you're you're, you're yeah, right there, yeah. like back room. That's oh, an yeah. insurance claim. Oh, great. Yeah, show it to me, man. This is America. First Amendment. Show it to me. Please. <laughs> People walk around with AK and I can't show you what took out the side of my house. Fuck that. Now you're going to see it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Especially when it's please. like a superhero. I feel like you have a lawsuit yeah. after that. At Anybody, least. Anybody, please. Some fat chick rolls off and bounces off the side of my house. Please. I'm going to show her. Panties up or not. I don't care. It's just going to see it. You know. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, I thought that was it, it was an interesting. Love you back. It's okay. It's, it's all right. It just comes with the territory. <laughs> just not everybody's suited for it, you know. It's just like you know, nice. Hey, we like you. 
We all do. We think you're wonderful. You're on time, everything like that. This is just not for you, you know? So, yeah. Hey, what can you do? But oh. it, he was he was a great guy. He was a great guy and a great guest. Mm-hmm. We're definitely going to have him back on, um, you know, like all of our indie comic creators. I feel like we're going to have them back on, like when they hit their next um, Kickstarter, which actually that's one update I actually did want to bring up here is the girl scout of comics uh carissa grant followed up with her Uh and oh nice um i said you know hey you know uh your podcast uh did really well on my channel and i hope the the kickstarter is going well and she said it ended well thank you uh highest amount yet by 1200 um, I said, wow. you know, you deserve it. You know, really great idea. And, uh, right. you know, she's just, uh, continuing on, you know, um, she's just happy to get this far. Sure. And uh, obviously I gave her some flattering words because she just has such a great idea and she has it planned out so far to where I'm also following her on social media where she's like asking people like, Hey, what do you think of this Anubis and Anubis's dog sketch? Like, which one do you like? She's polling the fans for what they like. She's really expanding out into what she is looking at at doing, you know? And that's, it's one of the, the best parts of our guest is seeing them be able to fully flesh out their idea and also get people on board, you know, like, uh, we just, we have so many amazing content creators like Josh Shockley, Brandon Spicer. We have, you know, Stephen Russell. We just had on, um, and amazing ideas all culminating into the the hot luck that is Tales sure. of the Hunted. It's, hey, oh my God, yeah. you're so much clear. You guys aren't blocking. We good? Oh my God, I we thought good? you. I thought you were pixelated people. What happened? Hey guys, I think- what's up? I Our thought, internet went to hell, so I, thought, I, I hopped on the, my mobile network from my phone. So I, I thought I was okay. talking we're to good? pixelated people, but we're not talking to the pixelated yeah, people. Cool. Um, you know that that is a whole other market we're not going to tap into now that you're not pixelated. Well, but, that's the new Marilyn Manson song, "The Pixelated People." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. 